Hello there, I'm Gav. I'm Dan. We're the Slow Mo Guys. Doing this job for several years now often leaves me with quite random questions in my head, such as, can C4 deflect a bullet out of the air? Solid question. <laughs> Couldn't exactly do that in the studio, so we've come again to the Colorado School of Mines. Our favorite place to go to when we need massive explosions. <laughs> Yeah, this is a really interesting experiment because I kind of know quite a bit about explosives and bullets having a background in it. You don't really know much about it. Absolutely nothing. But everyone else around us here knows so much more than I do. And nobody knows what's going to happen. This feels like a proper Mythbusters style video. Like it doesn't matter what happens, we'll have very interesting footage to look at. It's always exciting when all the experts are excited to do it. Yeah. It's, it's a real experiment and they're going to find out some interesting information. Where do you get experts being like, you know what? I don't really know. Exactly, yeah. Why don't we find out? All right, Dan, this is a hell of a setup compared to our usual stuff. Why don't you run us through it? It's a whole thing. We've got a nine mm pistol here in a rest, which is gonna be remotely fired with electronics for consistency. So we always get the same point of aim. Got high quality nine mil ammunition, just a ball round, but it's sort of mil spec. So it's got the consistency of about 1250 feet per second, which is gonna be very important. So it's gonna come out of here, hit this piece of cardboard with tape and wire on. This is a high tech piece of kit. It's basically a wire break. So when the bullet travels through here, it breaks a circuit. And then that gives us accurate timing for when the explosives need to be initiated. It can also set off our cameras as well. So the bullet comes through here at 1250 feet per second, and then we can have our explosives shorter or longer time between when it initiates. So currently the explosive's about a foot away from the bullet. Yeah, it's about a foot above the bullet and about two feet away from the, yeah. the, the break. Now, the reason we've got the wire break so close to the actual explosives rather than closer to the, the gun itself is because it cuts down on the inconsistency of the bullet. So there's a lot less travel time here and here than there would be between the gun and here. Then coming out of here, maybe we'll see some tumbling or I don't really know what's gonna happen, but we're gonna have this target here so that we can see where our, our rounds are landing. So if we end up with a hole below our test shot, we know something's happened. We know something's up. I think my favorite part was when you referred to a piece of wire on tape as a high-tech piece of kit. <laughs> <laughs> this is the free fly ember. This is just looking at the entire thing to see the whole experiment, about 800 frames a second. A little bit closer on our usual 4K. This is running at 1,000 frames a second. That'll see pretty much if the bullet goes up or down afterwards, if it's not obscured by the explosion. TMX 7510, maybe 200,000 frames a second. You'll be triggering that one. I'll be triggering that one. And then the School of Mines have provided their usual kit. The Shimatsu we used last time, black and white camera can film for about 250 odd frames. So very short duration, but we'll get about 10 seconds of extremely fast, millions of frames a second footage. Because we have such a short amount of time to record with the Shimatsu, we're using the trigger from the wire break to also trigger the cameras and the explosive. Yeah, the entire duration of the Shimatsu is, could be measured in nanoseconds really. So completely impossible to trigger by hand. And that's it. We're gonna be taking lots of pictures of this. Yes. Okay, so that was our control shot. Yeah, we've got a successful hit through here. So when we put our wire break, it will be able to trigger the cameras and the explosives. Bit of windage. Ah. Which will uh, <laughs> yeah. throw our results. Just spotted that, yeah. <laughs> right out the window. Interesting. Well, let's see if we can do something about that. But yeah. hopefully we'll have a, you know, if, we, if there's a deviation, hopefully it'll be pretty obvious. Yes, I'm hoping to get below the 10 at least. Yeah. And then maybe more. But we'll see. All right, I think it's time we wire up some, uh, some C4. This C4. 70 grams of C4 loaded in. We'll now hopefully learn a lot about the exposure and the timing. That's the plan. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Fire the hole! Fire the hole! Fire the hole! Okay, so that was a bit of a failure. We only heard the gun go off. No C4 explosion. Yeah, it turns out the brake screen here, the bullet went through between two wires and push them to the side. Yeah, look, flip it over. Look at the way it's, it's, yeah. it's still it's all like, in one piece. It's like gone perfect through, through between two of them and like moved them to the side. It just pushed them like curtains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, if it had just detached a little bit, it would have gone off. So now we'll have a brake screen with much tighter loops. Everyone's ready. Fire in the hole, fire in the hole, fire in the hole. Well, that went off. <laughs> it's a chest. You put it in the chest. Ooh. So our first indicator is going to be the target itself. Hmm. Ooh. The control shot first of all, and then where the wire didn't get cut. Yeah. Now it seems to have gone above it. Yeah, I think we need to look at the footage, yeah. see what we can see, and uh, then we can test and adjust explosives or timing or yeah. whatever needs to be changed.
bullets coming in. Boom. Oh. Just brushes past that. Oh, it's late. Okay, yeah. It's really late. That is late. Think oh, some, it's really late. I think some timing adjustments <laughs> might need to be made. Oh, well, you know, this is the first shot. <laughs> I'll still learn from the exposure on this, though. Gonna get moved. Look at the. That's gonna. Surely the bullet's gonna be annihilated by that. There's like several shockwaves to it. Oh yeah. What's look, that? Look, look at this. Look, there's a shockwave. Yeah, there's one. And then, and then there's a second. There's like here? a secondary one which maybe bounced off the back wall. Oh. Okay. Through the flame. Yeah. Something like that. And oh. then the one coming off the floor there. I think you're right. It's coming off the back wall because we're not far from it. All right. So we need to work on timing. I think so. And uh, I will work on exposure. All right. We're ready. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! This is the last one, I think, and this is this one, so it's pretty consistent. So I don't I think we've had an effect on target, which means that we might have been too early, yeah. or it just doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm still enjoying the footage. Yeah, me too. Maybe the maybe we'll have a little look at the cameras and that, that will tell us more. Okay, so we've discovered that at 187,500 frames a second, the bullet was a thousand frames too late. Because there's no delay between the paper and the explosion, yeah. the only thing we can do is just move the paper closer to the gun. Right. While keeping all the other distances the same. Okay. And the explosion is bright. It's so difficult to expose for both. Do you know what I like? Yeah. We've got all these like special delay things and triggers and all this detonator. Yeah. yeah, move the piece of cardboard back, probably about a meter. Bong it there? Yeah, uh, yeah, just move it there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah job done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fire in the hole, fire in the hole, fire in the hole. Maybe jump that time. <laughs> you were the one saying fire in the hole. I know, I don't know why I didn't <laughs> expect it. I was like, what's going on? The, the target's down. What does that mean? <laughs> okay. All right, back at full res, because the bullet is moving slow enough that we'll see it. And I'm very much relying on the explosion to light the bullet. There it is. Oh yeah, you can still see it. Oh, it's oh, late it's again. Oh, oh God, it's in there. And it's been hit by the shockwave. Doesn't seem to have done it anything didn't to the really, bullet. It was a bit behind it though. It you can see the, the bullet just being like, what was that? <laughs> That's a close one. Didn't even tumble it. That's, I'm surprised. I'm so surprised. Because even though the explosion is behind it, the shockwave has already hit it. Yeah. That second shockwave has hit it too. Yeah. And it didn't even budge. That really gives a perspective on how quickly the explosion is moving compared to the bullet already. Okay. Um, getting there on timing. I'll do a little bit more maths with the team and we'll nudge it back a little bit more. All right. You want the number from when it's directly under the explosive? Yeah. 18848 and detonation is a. Uh, 18732. Yeah, look at that. Oh, wow, yeah. You could probably go even lower than on the exposure. And now for a quick and cheeky ad read, this video is very kindly sponsored by Shady Rays. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offer premium polarized sunglasses with durable frames, high quality optics, just as good as any expensive brand. Here you can see a couple of the pairs I've chosen. I've got quite the schnoz and often struggle to find sunglasses that look all right on my head, but I'm a fan of how these look. I've enjoyed wearing them out and about towards the end of this summer. And if you're into winter sports, they have quick swap snow lenses to move effortlessly between full sun and low light environments. Shady Rays has a pretty insane protection policy. Every pair you buy from day one is backed by lost and broken replacements. Even if you sit on them or lose them day one, they'll send you a replacement pair, no questions asked. If you don't love your Shady Rays, you can exchange them for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. If you'd like to support this channel and help us fund much bigger video ideas like this one, please go to shadyrays.com, use the code SLOMO, and get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Big thanks to Shady Rays for sponsoring, even bigger thanks to you for listening. Now back to the booms. Okay, the sun is moving behind us now, so the, the start of this footage is gonna be incredibly dark, but hopefully the explosion will light the bullet. I think we're getting closer with it. Yeah, we're dialing it in. 
We're nearly there. You ready? Ready. Fingers okay. crossed. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! That's the sound you like. Oh, it's low. <laughs> it's not that much lower. It's not that much low. It's not as low as I was hoping, but it is low. Mm. Now, see that could just be. May have just moved. Yeah. Whoa! Oh, oh. Gosh, that was so quick and sudden. I don't think I saw the bullet. I might have to go frame by frame. Was it even there? Oh, it is there. Oh yeah, it's just it's next right to it. under it. It's right there. Surely this is going to be definitive, right? And it's still blown out. It looks like when you look into the sun, it moves like an inch. But based on our target, completely unaffected. Yeah, I am shocked. Unlike you... the bullet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Timing's good. Yeah. We need more power. Yeah, more power. So we're going twice the amount of explosives, which is more than twice the power, which is why we're all crammed in here. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! <laughs> This is the first Shimatsu shot that captured the bullet as well as the explosion. <laughs> it looks like someone's just hung a bullet there. And look here, frame by frame, you can actually see the explosion. Oh yeah, you can see the propagation through the actual explosive itself. Look at that too, it's a completely different shape. It's much less spherical than the 100 grams. That's amazing. So over here I'm aiming so we can see the target. The bullet, if it is being affected, isn't being affected on camera. So let's see what happens here. Look, oh, what's, oh, all this, shock what's all this stuff here? I think it's just sparks from the C4. Oh, there it is. No. Oh, oh yeah, it's like a fast moving spark. You have to pick it out from amongst the sparks, but it's definitely there. Again, it doesn't seem to have been affected at all. Just rushing out right. of the explosion. Blown away, Not uh, unlike the Look bullet. Look at it. It's, it's there so much later than those sparks and then it catches up to them. I guess it must just have so much like energy still behind it. Is it gonna go in the target on camera? Oh, oh, it just went in oh. right as it blew. The, is the, the, shock is wave. the target move moving because of the explosion <laughs> yeah. before the before the bullet even gets there? That's why our shots are all over this target. Yeah. <laughs> it's because the shockwave is blowing the target yeah. out of the way. Yeah, unless we make the target out of <laughs> <What>? immovable <laughs> solid like metal. <laughs> it's gonna get out of paper. Yeah, what fools. I think it's under the zero. You think it's this? Yeah. Because our previous effort was here. I think, if anything, the C4 made the bullet really accurate. It's made it more accurate. <laughs> okay, so we hit it with 200. The bullet is pretty much right below, slightly ahead of the explosive. Uh, we're going to go back to 100 now. But, but, yeah, this time we've moved the plate slightly further back again. So hopefully we'll get a bit more time under pressure from the explosion and the bullet will be a bit further this side. So it might start before the bullet's even... Yeah. That might give us our best chance. Yeah, I think so. If this doesn't do it, nothing will. Nothing will. That we're gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. All right. Fire in the hole, fire in the hole, fire in the hole. All right, so it sounds like we have a uh, Wait, we, yeah, we, lightning storm coming in. So that is potentially our final attempt. Yeah, lightning and explosives don't mix very well. If the timing was the same and it didn't deviate, I just don't think it's going to do it. Yeah, I think we've got our answer if it didn't deviate. To capture all the bright detail at the beginning of the C4 explosion, I've stopped the lens all the way down on this shot. Now, good luck finding the bullet. And this is 100,000 frames a second. Oh, wow, wow, you can see the detail there. It looks like the first 0.01 second of Oppenheimer. And the bullet oh, yeah. is right beneath it's, it. Oh, the uh, timing. You couldn't, you couldn't be more on. That is, it's just, it's just, that is an insane, like even though the bullet is so small because we want to see the explosion, that is a bullet sat directly under the first microsecond of an explosion from C4. That is pretty cool. As a moment in time, that, that is absolutely insane. Yeah, that happened and we captured it there. <laughs> We've essentially blown up a bullet there. I thought that it would be, at that point, if we nailed it with C4, in the ground. Yeah. You know? God, a million frames a second. The temporal difference between those two is insane. <laughs> the bullet's barely moving. To be honest, that is definitive. It's back down here again. So it's lower, but it's not any lower than just the random pattern we've been getting throughout the day with the wind. It's not a considerable amount lower that I would be like, yeah, 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 explosions, you know, yeah. deflect bullets. Well, pe peel up the thing just so we can see the sand and see the true impacts. Yeah, so you can see yeah, here. They're all of them just in there. It's a pretty tight grouping. That's a tight grouping. Yeah, I'd be happy with that if I was shooting from 25 yards. Myth? Myth that no one was asking about? <laughs> Busted. Hey, everyone, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheers, guys. <laughs> yeah, I think that's our answer. 
you know what, even though it didn't happen, I still love the footage. Or at least not with this position of the bullet with this amount of C4. Yeah, we could change like the gun we use. Yeah. And the amount of explosives, that sort of thing. Yeah, unfortunately we've run out of light really and uh, we have to move on. Uh, but there is lightning as well. There's also lightning coming, which I hope it doesn't uh, strike one of the objects from one of our upcoming videos because that would make <laughs> That would make it more powerful. That would make it more powerful. Well, for me, that was such an interesting experiment just because there was so much at play and so many different options and things that could have happened. Like if you, for instance, get just a bullet next to an explosion, blow it up, bullet's gonna go flying, obviously. But because it has so much energy behind it and it's aerodynamic, you know, it's cutting through the air with the rifling and everything, just breeze, seem to breeze through. Yeah, I honestly wish we could have done like five straight days of this, just changing every variable, like the timings and the even the speed of the bullet. The footage was class though. Just the fact that you could see a bullet basically paused under a very fast moving explosion. It puts both of those things into perspective of each other, which in real time look completely identical. I'd say more of an inconclusive. Okay, a, a revisit then. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I just want to come back and try it again. <laughs> Give us five years and a bit of money and uh, yeah. we'll be back again. Yeah, all right. Big old fat thanks to the Colorado School of Mines. There's information about them in the description of this video if you want to find out more about what they do. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and we've got plenty of other videos filmed right here at the Colorado School of Mines. Have a little peek. Little cheeky peek. Cheeky peek. <laughs>